Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about that major upcoming heat wave that is on the way for the eastern United States. It is going to get very hot, and it actually looks more major than I originally anticipated. So we're going to talk about all of that in just a moment. <music> Alright, now here we are taking a look at the past 30 days because I just want to take a little bit of a contrast look at how it has been versus how it is going to be because it's just the opposite. I mean, really, we, we're taking a look at far below normal temperatures over the previous 30 days. So basically the entire month of May so far and most of the end of April as well, I was just very, very chilly here in the eastern United States compared to what is typical. Uh, and then in the western United States, we were dealing with this warm pocket of air. We call this our positive PNA. You guys are probably sick and tired of hearing me say that because I've talked about it so much over the past few weeks but that really really is the reason why we've been in the pattern we've been in it is the driving force behind it once we take a look at the previous 14 days it gets actually more extreme because it's been even colder over the past 14 days than it was over the past 30 days as a whole so the colder portion of that is the latter portion of it the more recent uh, portion of that colder air uh, so the past 14 days, we've been dealing with these temperatures here in the eastern half of the country that were about 4 to 8 degrees below normal here in the green areas, which you might be thinking that's not that much, but on a 14-day on a period for you to average being that far below normal uh, is very extreme because there was some warmer days in there, uh, so the colder days had to be very, very cold to drive that average all the way down there. It's a mean average. Uh, we see the western United States was very warm. Again, that positive PNA still there, obviously, was driving this entire pattern We've been in for a very, very long time, like I've said before. Uh, mostly ever since about the beginning of April, we've been stuck in this very cold pattern in the east. For the most part, there has been some breakups in it, uh, but generally it has just been mostly uh, dominated by some colder air. Uh, and even the past 17, or sorry, not 17 days, 7 days, the past week or so, you can see we've been dealing with this very cold air in the southeastern United States and the south central United States. The north central and the northeastern United States have seen some warmth, however, uh, over this past seven days. Uh, that is the beginning of this kind of warmer air heading into the United States. So let's just move towards the future, actually, or today, actually, on this frame uh, from the time I'm making this video. I might upload this a little later, so it won't be today. It will be yesterday or the day before or something. But here we are taking a look at Wednesday, May 19th. And as you can see, we're going to begin to see that warm air move in, actually, on Wednesday. That's the beginning of it. Uh, we see mostly oranges and reds for the eastern half of the country. And look at that, some blues and greens moving into the northwest. That is the beginning of the end for that positive PNA transitioning into a negative PNA, which is a massive, massive pattern change, actually. Uh, so that is going to be the driving force behind this pattern flip now as well. So what we're going to do, actually, is we're going to move on. We're going to move on towards Thursday, May 20th and beyond, where it's actually going to get a lot warmer in the eastern United States. All right, now here we are taking a look at Thursday, May 20th, and as you can see, we have those darker reds that are in the eastern half of the country. That is indicating far above normal temperatures, about 8 to 16 degrees above normal there. Uh, we do have those very cold temperatures in the west again. Like I said, the negative PNA is really setting in uh, with some very frigid air actually over there in the western United States. This is what is allowing for this warmer air to just shove itself in to the eastern half of the country, giving us some pleasant weather, even beyond pleasant, actually too hot for most people, uh, is what we're going to be dealing with here. By the time we reach Friday, May 21st, you can see it's getting even warmer there in the eastern half of the country still. Uh, as we're just approaching the beginning of that first heat wave, we see even colder temperatures out west solidifying that negative PNA that we're going to be stuck in for, a, I'm hoping, at least a week or two. I don't want to go back to those colder temperatures. I'm ready for some summer-like weather. Uh, we're obviously about 10 days away from meteorological summer, so we're very close anyway. Uh, but I'm ready for this kind of cold air to come to an end. At least near normal would be great, but I will take the above average temperatures if we have to, obviously. By the time we're reaching Saturday, uh, and that's going to be May 22nd, you can see we have even further above normal temperatures in the east and even further below normal temperatures in the west. So we're basically seeing this pattern become more and more extreme, actually. Um, so that's kind of how this is progressing. And then by the time we're reaching Sunday, May 23rd, this is when the heat wave starts to set in. Look at those dark reds for North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, the Delmarva, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. That is where we're having 90s most likely on Sunday, May 23rd already. Now, by the time we reach Monday, it kind of cools down a little bit. 
And by cools down, I mean just less above normal. It's actually just going to be about maybe 4 to 10 degrees above normal, whereas the day before it was about 12 to 16 degrees. So it's still well above normal. It's just less above normal, if that makes sense. Uh, and it's the same time, uh, sorry, the same thing by the time we reach Tuesday, May 25th. Uh, those reds showing up, not quite as dark here. Uh, but we're approaching the beginning of that second heat wave. And like I said before, I actually think this second one is going to be the more potent uh, of the two, actually. So let's just go ahead and move towards it. This is going to be Wednesday, May 26th. You can th see things get a lot hotter as we get those darker reds showing up, even those gray showing up in there. That is most likely going to be 90s and 100s in there for Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, especially, uh, but also some other states as well, most likely. And by the time we reach Thursday, May 27th, you can see it's the same story, but even hotter from New Jersey southward all the way down to Georgia. We're probably dealing with um, some scattered in 100s, most likely upper 90s widespread for the southeastern portion of the United States. And by the time we reach Friday, there's still some darker reds around, especially the further south you go, but it's not just quite as hot. It's probably going to be 80s, most likely upper 80s uh, for most areas, especially in the mid-Atlantic, but the southeast will likely be still 90s. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the actual temperatures. What could this mean? How hot is it going to get on each day? And will we have an official heat wave? All of those answers are coming up in just a moment. All right, and here we are taking a look at those actual temperatures. And this is going to be Thursday afternoon, May 20th. That's going to be tomorrow from the time I'm making this video. As you can see, we do have some 90s, but only for Virginia, it looks like, in Maryland, as well as a little bit of West Virginia, potentially. Very interesting there. Kind of a um, pretty precise area seeing just 90s. You need three days in a row with 90s or more to be considered an official heat wave. So we start counting the days now. Um, but by the time we reach Saturday, Friday's kind of a question mark. We could see some 90s in there. That would make it officially a heat wave. Uh, but Saturday is going to have widespread 90s. Those grays are pretty much indicating the 90 degree plus temperatures. So you can see there's some of that for Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, uh, even up in through New Jersey as well. Uh, but especially Virginia, they're dealing with the hottest temperatures. That is my home state. Uh, so very, very interesting to see us getting those uh, lower to mid 90s there. Uh, but it's not over yet because take a look at Sunday as things get a lot hotter, way more widespread with the 90s. Uh, basically from Alabama, Georgia, Florida, up through the Carolinas and into Virginia, even up in through New Jersey again and all the surrounding states. Uh, but we're seeing mid-90s, maybe even upper 90s for Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. Very, very interesting. So uh, we might not see 90s on Friday, and that would basically cut off the opportunity for there to be an official heat wave because, again, you need three days in a row. We would see Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, I mean, technically it's not going to be that different. You know, you're not going to be like, this wasn't a heat wave because it wasn't three days in a row. It's going to be very hot for four days straight. One of those days might not be a 90 day. And that's what's going to keep it from potentially being a actual heat wave. Uh, but regardless, it's just going to be so hot and it's going to feel like a heat wave regardless. Starting our second heat wave, which is going to be probably worse, like I said, Wednesday, May 26th is the first day of this one. We see widespread upper 90s for Florida, uh, Mississippi, uh, we see Alabama in there as well. Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia. Again, the hottest in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia where we're seeing 99 or 100 plus. Pretty widespread there. Um, very interesting. Very hot for this time of year. Thursday, as you can see, again, upper 90s, 100s potentially for Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia. Um, and even this model doesn't really go to it, but Friday has some 90s and 100s around as well. Uh, but we're kind of out of time here. Uh, but yeah, so I think there's a much higher odds at this point that that second heat wave is officially a heat wave rather than the first one. But there's a really great chance that we see two heat waves as well, two separate three day periods with 90 degrees plus uh, it's a very hot 10 day period coming up. This is going to be an extreme pattern flip going from the very cool temperatures, you know, 60s and 70s, kind of unseasonably cold to just absolutely uh, way unseasonably hot, even hotter than it was cold. Um, we're dealing with 15 to 20 degrees above normal for some regions. Obviously, 100 degrees in Virginia uh, isn't even normal in uh, July or August. So this is a very extreme situation, a very interesting heat wave, and I hope everybody stays cool during this heat wave. I'm going to continue to keep you guys up to date with this because I think this is the most major weather that is going on uh, over the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to try to frequently update you guys with this. Our confidence tab is at a 5 out of 6. It's pretty much a sure thing, at least for the first one, uh, that there's going to be a lot of 90s. Uh, for many days. Uh, that second one's a little bit further out, but I'm starting to become more confident in that one as well. 
Uh, anyway, for today's Patreon highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum Patrons, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry LePan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Mike Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Faligo, Garys, and John Felici, alongside Dwight Phelan as well, alongside our channel members, our Weather Top Dogs, Hair Farms 1, and as well as Catbite. I would like to thank all of you for supporting the channel. You can check out our Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. But you can also check out our channel membership that's going to be next to that subscribe button. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a YouTube comment down below for that YouTube algorithm. And be sure to subscribe if you like weather related content. I will see you guys in the next video.